Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Ed Hope, a junior doctor in the UK, and we're gonna do another rapid fight scene trauma diagnosis, this time the Marvel superhero Daredevil, and we're gonna take the Netflix adaption and that pretty brutal hallway scene. As with all these videos, each injury, we're gonna assume the worst possible diagnosis, which is a principle of trauma medicine anyway. We have to rule out all the serious things. This scene is widely respected for its realism rather than its sensationalism. So let's check it out and break down those injuries. Three, two, one, fight. I'm not quite sure where the first guy gets kicked here, but the second guy gets a right hook to the cheek. So as well as a superficial hematoma and probable fracture of the cheekbone, he gets knocked out. So rapid rotational forces on the cheek classic for causing a loss of consciousness and we don't really know why this is. We're traditionally taught that this is causing a disruption to the neurons around the brain stem, so deep within the brain. Despite a force like this, actually more likely to cause significant acceleration and deceleration higher up in the brain around the cerebral cortex. There's one theory that the trauma causes a kind of depolarization of the brain, similar to a mini seizure, but actually we don't know and you can imagine it's very difficult to find this type of thing out, running around trying to find people that have been hit in the head. But what we do know is what we can observe and that is a rapid rotational force to the head is likely to make you lose consciousness as demonstrated by Daredevil in this chap here. Ooh, flying through a door, probably just bruising, possible left ACJ dislocation from forth to the lateral aspect of the shoulder as he impacts the door and then the door to the ground. He also stays down, so he may well be winded, so spasm of the diaphragm from the fall, or he may have even had a head injury off camera. A head injury very much on camera, blunt force trauma to the parietal region of the head, scalp laceration, hematoma, and possibly a depressed skull fracture and brain contusion. He'll need an urgent CT head. No obvious injuries for this guy, he has quite a controlled landing, you know, as best as he could, but he's probably had a bit of a beating off camera as he's very slow to get to his feet. Blunt force trauma to the forehead, probable frontal hematoma, and then a knee to the right upper quadrant, so rib fracture or even a liver shot. So trauma to the liver is not only very painful, but it's thought that when the liver capsule is stretched from the trauma, it causes a rush down the parasympathetic nerves to end up dropping your blood pressure and leading to collapse, which may go some way to explain why this guy slumps to the floor. <laughs> Blood force trauma causing hyperextension. It's kind of like an uppercut here from a gun stock. Alongside the rotational force on the head that we said earlier, this hyperextension force on the head also has a high chance of causing loss of consciousness as well as a possible cervical spine injury. And we'd likely also get facial bone fractures and traumatic tooth extraction. Possible left clavicle fracture from that gun stock trauma. X-ray to rule that out. Thrown to the floor, probably not enough to cause a lumbar fracture, but you'd have to rule that out with clinical examination and x-ray or CT. This dude gets another blood force trauma to the right upper quadrant. I've seen this a few times in this video series where the same person gets multiple of the same injuries. So if he wasn't winded or suffering from a liver shot, he probably is now. Blunt force trauma to the face with a flying gun. I'm no tactical expert, but throwing a gun at someone? I'm hoping that Daredevil knows there's no more bullets in it. Probably a hematoma and a laceration, maybe even a facial bone fracture, and maybe losing a tooth or two. Some kind of one-armed shoulder roll, which he should be okay from, and then pistol whip to the left mandible, possible mandibular fracture. Takes a blow to the back. Worst case scenario would be a posterior rib fracture. Blunt force trauma to the upper chest. He holds it like he's got a possible laryngeal fracture or pretty rare, but a sternoclavicular joint subluxation or dislocation. 
again this nasty rotational head injury, this time contact with the temporal bone, as well as loss of consciousness and a superficial hematoma, would also be concerned for an intracranial bleed, so a bleed around the brain in the form of an epidural hematoma, as the middle meningeal artery runs very close under the temporal bone. So we need to do a CT to look for this. Several punches to the face and head here. Hematoma, so bruising of the soft tissue as well as facial bone fractures. So probably nasal, left zygomatic arch and left orbital blowout fractures. All of these people that I've talked about having facial injuries would be going to the max fax surgeons once we've ruled out any brain injuries with a CT head. Not quite sure where that kick was to, maybe the collarbone or head. Either way, we've covered both of those injuries. He does sustain a kick to the right temporal region and is saved by the ropes. Again, superficial bleeding, either a laceration or hematoma, fracture to the bones, so the skull or facial bones, and again, that concern for a traumatic brain injury too. This dude runs in and gets an uppercut to the mandible. As we said, these can easily knock you out, which it appears to do, but he quickly regains his faculties. Although clearly still reeling from the effects, he'll be so-called punch drunk. So as his brain comes back online, he'll be dazed, slower reflexes, unsteady on his feet and blurred vision, which is not going to help with the remainder of the fight. Several more face and head injuries, everything we've said before, superficial swelling and bleeds, fractures to the bones and concern for bruising or bleeds on the brain. Various blunt force traumas to the chest, so bruising and possible rib fractures. Rib fractures themselves aren't an issue, it's only if you have multiple fractures that you lose the integrity of the chest wall, what we call a flail chest, or if the rib fracture causes underlying lung injury, so a pneumothorax. Multiple blunt force trauma to the right upper quadrant, again in the region of the liver and possible rib or costochondral fracture, can also cause a liver laceration, so actually ripping through the liver. And because the liver is a very vascular organ, it's basically a big bag of blood, can lead to significant hemorrhage. So if this person comes into the emergency department with pain in their area, we'd have to do an ultrasound scan to make sure there's no blood in the abdomen. <laughs> Kind of like a WWE move. I'm not quite sure where that even landed. I think it hits the head or neck, but not quite sure. Assuming he has got a neck injury here, we'd have to immobilize this chap at the scene with a collar and blocks and on a spinal board to prevent any spinal cord injury if there has been a fracture. <laughs> Spinal cord injury was probably unlikely given the fact this dude is back for more, although he could still have a cervical fracture and those blows aren't gonna help. Again, we see facial bone fractures, that seems to be Daredevil's MO, as well as a concern for that traumatic brain injury. Daredevil himself took a fair few blows too and good job he wrapped his fists as he'd probably have fractures to his metacarpals. In terms of a kill count for this scene, it's really difficult. They could all in fact be relatively stable, but with the amount of head injuries, a couple of them could easily be unlucky with a bleed on the brain, which would make them critically ill and need urgent neurosurgical intervention. And also worth noting that anyone unconscious, particularly with a facial fracture too, is at risk of death from simply being so unconscious that they block their own airway, so-called swallowing your tongue, and are unable to breathe. And as I said, the facial injury may cause bleeding and swelling as well that makes this more difficult. So you need people at the scene here to secure those airways. So there you have it, another fantastic fight scene. And thank you guys for telling me to check it out. This one was a lot more gritty. The choreography felt a lot more real. So very different from a lot of the fight scenes we've broken down so far. So very good recommendations. As always, any other fight scenes you want me to check out, then leave a comment down below. I heard as well there's a hallway scene in the second season, hopefully. That's not the one you all wanted me to break down. But yeah, if you guys want me to check that out, 
that sounds good to me. And finally, thank you for watching this far into the video and for all the continued support on the channel, all the likes, all the shares. It continues to blow my mind. So I hope you're all well and I'll see you soon.